Night on the Graveyard Shift, grab your shovel, cos we're exhuming a couple of Edward Jr. movies, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Ah, oh, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. How successful has it been? Not very. And the horrible Night of the Ghouls. I don't know what this is all about, or what you're all doing here. But I'm going to hold you right here until someone tells me where Lieutenant Bradford is. Plus, we take a look at the latest Hollywood alien fleet, Battlefield Earth. And we check out the bits of Alien Ridley Scott didn't want you to see. I'm Tabitha, and yes, tonight we celebrate the worst director of all time, Edward D. Wood Jr. Edward wasn't just a poor director, he was cheap. Wood was so cheap, he used to sneak tape recorders into other movies to pinch their soundtracks. The thief. Unfortunately, though, for you tonight, we're showing two of his originals, starting with the film widely considered the worst movie ever made, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Plan 9. Ah, oh, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long distance electrode shot in the pineal pituitary glands of the recent dead. You didn't explain as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? How successful? Not very. Yes, it's the film that could suck start a leaf blower. Plan 9 from outer space. That's followed by another of Eddie's gems, Night of the Ghouls. Only the spiritual light may prevail within this room. We are waiting, O oh spirits of the dark world beyond. We are waiting your judgment, your all-glorious knowledge of truth and righteousness. I love it. Close the curtains and put the popcorn on. I dare you to sit through both films. Here's a litmus test for you, though. and happy hunting! It just seems like the basic sci-fi premise, you know, like aliens come, take over the Earth. You know, we want to try to take it back before they destroy it and us, and we have a battle. Aliens come down to Earth and we have a battle. Sounds messy, hey? Actually, according to star John Travolta, it's a comedy. And Travolta has campaigned for 10 years to have L. Ron Hubbard's book, Battlefield Earth, made into a movie. This is such a popular book, you know, six million copies worldwide, 23 different countries, and it was begging to be a movie. And with my history of books in the movies with General Stoddard and Civil Action and um, uh, um, Get Shorty and other books I've done into films, I felt like I was, I was starting to get a real feel for what the right way to go from book to movie is. Battlefield Earth also stars Travolta's wife, Kelly Preston, as a particularly uh, frisky alien. And has other advantages. When he's at the bar, kind of drunk, uh, when the scene with Kelly, uh, with the tongue... Uh, Look out for Forrest Whitaker as well Kerr. as an even sleazier alien. She's, uh, Kerr is... Uh, a cyclo, he's an alien from the planet Cyclos, and uh, he works uh, underneath uh, Terrell, or Terrell, uh, who is uh, the head of security for the planet Earth. And I'm, I'm just trying to uh, progress and move forward and get a better job, uh, really to take his job. He's supposed to leave, I'm supposed to take over, and, and it caused a lot of friction between us was, uh, because of it. Considering this story was written by the father of Scientology, and bear in mind that Scientologists believe we're all descended from aliens, what is this saying about Travolta's religion? Well, this is science fiction, the other's philosophy, and he's very famous for uh, science fiction for many, many years, so I think most, the six million readers that read the book of uh, Battlefield Earth know the difference, and soon, when they see it, they'll see. Please, as a friend, couldn't you forget to file the report? Well... As a friend, I could forget to file the report. But unfortunately, I'm not your friend! <laughs> Build 
Elvis the Great Bela Lugosi's last film, Plan 9 from Outer Space, tells the tale of a bunch of aliens and their plan to take over the Earth via the reanimation of dead Earthlings. However, the fact that Plans 1 through to 8 failed miserably gives you some idea of what sort of aliens we're dealing with here. They're not gifted. Pick up your electrode gun. Make sure it's in working order before pointing it at him. Yeah, I'd be worried about the equipment too. Check out their spaceship. Paper plates and 57 Chrysler hubcaps. Simple as that. Doesn't get better though. In one scene to simulate the alien spacecraft blowing up and catching a light during takeoff, they doused a paper plate in gasoline and threw it at the camera. So, the spaceships are funny, but wait till you see the humans. Bela Lugosi was billed as the star of the film, even though he only appears for about two minutes. This footage was shot by Ed Wood just days before Lugosi died from a barbiturate overdose in his L.A. home. Here he is leaving co-star Tor Johnson's house. I think he's off to meet the man. The grief of his wife's death became greater and greater agony. The home they had so long shared together became a tomb, a sweet memory of her joyous living. Since Lugosi carked it even before the film was properly started, Wood got a stand-in to do his scenes. Now the stand-in looks nothing like Lugosi and is at least a foot taller than him. But better than that, he isn't even an actor. He was Ed Wood's wife's chiropractor. Nice posture though. Yeah, keep that cloak up, buddy. Also look out for Mela Nurmi. She was the late night host of The Vampira Show, which ran for eight months in 1954. Check out The Waste. Apparently she used to spread papaya powder, which is a meat tenderizer, mixed with cold cream on her midsection. It basically ate away at her skin. She was also buddies with James Dean, but that's another story. Ex-wrestler Tor Johnson is back from the dead as Inspector Clay. He has a 70-inch waist. ugly man. His wrestling name was the Swedish Angel and apparently he wasn't bad. Probably because he was also very fat. His favourite dessert was several boxes of ice cream. Hmm. So being fat is good for wrestling and being in Ed Wood movies. It's not so good for your bathroom though. Apparently Tor Johnson used to steal toilet seats from hotels because due to his massive weight he kept breaking his own toilet seat at home. Kept breaking them had to steal new ones. Guess working for Ed Wood, he didn't earn enough money to buy them. Speaking of the cold hard stuff, Plan 9 from Outer Space was funded by a Baptist church, so the entire cast and crew were baptised before filming started. But I believe Tor was on the toilet at the time and he missed out. Here it is, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yes, it's Edward Night tonight on the Graveyard Shift, and I'm showing another one from the bottom of the barrel, Night of the Ghouls. This film was so terrible that even the director disowned it. Well, sort of. He didn't have enough money to pay the film developing lab, so the lab held on to the film for 26 years until Wood raised the money to bail it out. Of course, by this time, his reputation as the crappiest director in Hollywood was well and truly cemented, so he didn't bother with the cinematic release straight to video. In fact, this film may well have been the first film that did go straight to video. God, if a goth in bad makeup tried to kiss me like that, I'd scream too. Night of the Ghouls was supposed to be a sequel to Bride of the Monster. 
Never mind that Tor Johnson, a.k.a. Lobo, dies at the end of that film. Here he is somehow resurrected and feeling not much better, thank you. The house was not all that remained of the old scientist horrors. <sighs> Ugly, that's the man who breaks toilet seats. He's a big un. Also appearing is Ken Duncan, who did Calamity Jane in 1953 and about a hundred other Western flicks. Here, however, he plays Dr. Acula. Get it? Dr. Acula. According to his bio, he was an ex-stuntman and his nickname was Ken Horsecock Duncan. Oh. So that's how he does all that knocking under the table at the seance. Night of the Ghouls. Hilarious, no? Did anyone spot Ed Wood at the start? He's in the photo on the wall at the cop shop. I love Eddie. What a battler. And what a drinker. Ed Wood had a few pseudonyms for obvious reasons, but one of them was Akdov Telmig, which is the name of his favourite drink, spelled backwards. A vodka gimlet. That's two ounces of vodka and two ounces of lime juice. Mm -mm. Time now for this. It's been 20 years since Hollywood's most famous alien made its spectacular entrance via John Hurt's stomach. Last year, Alien the 20th Anniversary Edition got a DVD release. This month, it's out on video. In addition to the movie, there are 10 deleted scenes, such as this scene which sees Lambert confronting Ripley about letting the infected Kane back aboard the ship. All right, what the fuck is going on? Hey, hey! Even if it's against the law? You goddamn right. Well, maybe she should have. Who the hell knows what that thing is? How come you guys brought it up here in the first place? Right. Mm, pretty tense. It's enlightening to note that Veronica Cartwright was originally going to play the part of Ripley. When she got to England, they gave the part to Sigourney Weaver instead. Any tension there? I um, got to England and I thought I was playing Ripley. And um, so when they called me up from wardrobe and told me that I had to go in to be fitted for Lambert, I said, oh, no, you've made some mistake. And um, so then I ended up calling my agent, and I said, aren't I doing Ripley? And he said, yeah, And because uh, that's the only part I'd ever... So it was a shock, actually, that I was playing Lambert. So I said I had to reread the script. Hey, she must have been PO'd. Also included is an extended version of the scene where Brett, played by Harry Dean Stanton, meets his messy end. Alien, the 20th anniversary edition, is released on video this month. Here's a taste of what we're spiking your medicine with next week on The Graveyard Shift. Next week on The Graveyard Shift. Let's not get eaten alive on this island. Why are you waking up all these sleepy people? Lights. Cameras. Nice, sweet, sweet monkey. Jessica Lang and Jeff Bridges star in King Kong. Here's to the big one. Followed by King Kong vs. Godzilla. A wonderful stunt. Terrific. The Simeon superstar battles with a radioactive reptile. A monster. Come on, think. I want action now and no arguments. It's okay. They're all smoking. King Kong can't make a monkey out of us. Tabitha presents The Graveyard Shift next week on Arena. Till then, Shifties, see you round like a rectum. <laughs>